Hello. Today's book is pretty special. It's been, it takes place a long time ago in a small town, practically, well, they call it a village, which means it's really small. And it's, there's no cars, there's no airplanes, there's no TV, there's no internet, there's no iPhones, there's not even telephones. And it's about a man who never smiles and never laughs and a woman and a young boy who maybe don't save the world, but I think they save one man. Let's read. The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey Written by Susan Wojcikowski Illustrated by P.J. Lynch This story is going to be read in two parts. The first part posted on December 24th. Look for part two on Sunday, December 27. The village children called him Mr. Gloomy, but in fact, his name was Toomey, Mr. Jonathan Toomey. And though it's not kind to call people names, this one fit quite well. For Jonathan Toomey seldom smiled and never laughed. He went about mumbling and grumbling, muttering and sputtering, grumping and griping. He complained that the church bells rang too often, that the birds sang too shrilly, and that the children played too loudly. He spent his days sitting at a workbench, carving beautiful shapes from blocks of pine and hickory and chestnut wood. After supper, he sat in a straight back chair near the fireplace, smoking his pipe and staring into the flames. Jonathan Toomey wasn't an old man, but if you saw him, you might think he was, the way he walked, bent forward with his head down. You wouldn't notice his eyes, the clear blue of an August sky. And you wouldn't see the dimple on his chin, since his face was mostly hidden under a shaggy, untrimmed beard, speckled with sawdust and wood shavings, and depending on what he ate that day, with crumbs of bread or a bit of potato or dried gravy. The village people didn't know it, but there was a reason for his gloom, a reason for his grumbling, a reason why he walked hunched over as if carrying a great weight on his shoulders. Some years earlier, when Jonathan Toomey was young and full of life and full of love, his wife and baby had become very sick. And because those were the days before hospitals and medicines and skilled doctors, his wife and baby died three days apart from each other. So Jonathan Toomey had packed his belongings into a wagon and traveled until his tears stopped. He settled into a tiny house at the edge of a village to do his wood carving. One day in early December, there was a knock at Jonathan's door. Mumbling and grumbling, he went to answer it. There stood a woman and a young boy. I'm the widow McDowell. I'm new in your village. This is my son, Thomas, the woman said. I'm seven and I know how to whistle, said Thomas. Whistling is pish posh, said the wood carver gruffly. I need something carved, said the woman, and she told Jonathan about a very 
special set of Christmas figures her grandfather had carved for her when she was a girl. After I moved here, I discovered they were lost, she explained. I had hoped that by some miracle I would find them again, but it hasn't happened. There are no such things as miracles, the woodcarver told her. Now, could you describe the figures for me? There were sheep, she told him. Two of them with curly wool, added Thomas. Yes, two, said the widow, and a cow, an angel, Mary, Joseph, the baby Jesus, and the wise men. Three of them, added Thomas. Will you take the job? asked the widow McDowell. I will. I'm grateful. How soon can you have them ready? They'll be ready when they are ready, he said. Oh, but I must have them by Christmas. They mean very much to me. I can't remember a Christmas without them. Christmas is pish posh, said Jonathan gruffly, and he shut the door. The following week, there was a knock on the woodcarver's door. Muttering and sputtering, he went to answer it. And there stood the widow McDowell and Thomas. Excuse me, said the widow, but Thomas has been begging to come and watch you work. He says he wants to be a woodcarver when he grows up and would like to watch you since you were the best in the valley. I'll be quiet. You won't even know I'm here. Please, please, piped in Thomas. With a grumble, the woodcarver stepped aside to let them in. He pointed to a stool near his workbench. No talking, no jiggling, no noise, he ordered Thomas. The widow McDowell handed Mr. Toomey a warm loaf of cornbread as a token of thanks. Then she took out her knitting and sat down in a rocking chair in the far corner of the cottage. Not there! bellowed the woodcarver. No one sits in that chair. So she moved to the straight back chair by the fire. Thomas sat very still. Once, when he needed to sneeze, he pressed a finger under his nose to hold it back. Once, when he wanted desperately to scratch his leg, he counted to 20 to keep his mind off the itch. After a very long time, Thomas cleared his throat and whispered, Mr. Turley, may I ask a question? The woodcarver glared at Thomas and then shrugged his shoulders and grunted. Thomas decided it meant yes, so he went on. Is that my sheep you're carving? The woodcarver nodded and grunted again. After another very long time, Thomas whispered, Mr. Toomey, excuse me, but you're carving my sheep wrong. The widow McDowell's knitting needles stopped clicking. Jonathan Toomey's knife stopped carving. Thomas went on. It's a beautiful sheep, nice and curly, but my sheep looked happy. That's pish posh, said Mr. Toomey. Sheep are sheep. They cannot look happy. Mine did, said Thomas. They knew they were with the baby Jesus, so they were happy. After that, Thomas was quiet for the rest of the afternoon. When the church bells chimed six o'clock, Mr. Toomey grumbled under his breath about the awful noise. The widow McDowell said it was time to leave. Thomas sneezed three times and then thanked the woodcarver for allowing him to watch. That evening, after a supper of cornbread and boiled potatoes, the woodcarver sat down at his bench. He picked up his knife. He picked up the sheep. He worked until his eyelids drooped shut. A few days later, there was a knock at the woodcarver's door. Griping and grumbling, he went to answer it. There stood the widow and her son. May I watch again? I will be quiet, said Thomas. He settled himself on the stool very quietly while his mother laid a basket of sweet smelling raisin buns on the table. The teapot is warm, Mr. Toomey said gruffly, his head bent over his work. 
while Mr. Toomey carved, the widow McDowell poured tea. She touched the woodcarver gently on the shoulder and placed a cup of tea and a bun next to him. He pretended not to notice, but soon both the plate and the cup were empty. Thomas tried to eat the bun his mother had given him as quietly as he could, but it is almost impossible to be seven and eat a warm, sticky raisin bun without making various smacking, licking, satisfied noises. When Thomas had finished, he tried to sit quietly. Once he almost hiccuped, but he took a deep breath <gasps> and, and held it until his face turned red. And once, without thinking, he began to swing his legs, but at a glare from the woodcarver, stopped him and he kept them still. So still, they fell asleep. After a very long time, Thomas whispered, Mr. Toomey, excuse me, may I, may I ask a question? Grunt. Is that my cow you're carving? Nod and grunt. Another very long time went by. Then Thomas cleared his throat <coughs> and said, Mr. Toomey, excuse me, but I must tell you something. That is, that is a beautiful cow, the most beautiful cow I have ever seen, but it's not right. My cow looked proud. That's pish posh, growled the woodcarver. Cows are cows. They cannot look proud. My cow did. It knew that Jesus chose to be born in its barn, so it was proud. Thomas was quiet for the rest of the afternoon. The only sounds that could be heard were the scraping of the carving knife, the humming of the widow McDowell, and the click click of her knitting needles. When the church bells chimed six o'clock, Mr. Toomey muttered under his breath about the noise. The widow McDowell said it was time to leave. Thomas shook first one leg, then the other. He thanked the woodcarver for allowing him to watch. That evening, after a supper of boiled potatoes and raisin buns, the woodcarver sat down again at his bench. He picked up his carving knife. He picked up the cow. He worked until his eyelids drooped shut. This is the end of part one of the Christmas miracle of Jonathan Toomey. Tune in on Sunday, December 27th to find out what happens next.